Hello everybody, I've been having great fun playing with these little mini stencils from Hobbycraft. They're £1.50 each and they are perfect size for a journal page. So you can see here I used this one and I painted in watercolour and then blotted through the stencil so you can see the dots there and there coming up really nicely. There are a whole bunch of designs, I got a few of them. Um, these are the ones I've used the most and uh, I've got some sort of swirly patterns and stars and things which I seem to have mislaid at the moment, they're here somewhere, but um, those will, th those are my faves at the minute but um, I'm sure I'll get on to the others as well. I'm going to be today using the technique of the blotting through the stencil and I'm going to use it with, I'm going to use this honeycomb one. So. I've got a bit of a theme of bees going on. Um, I cut this out of a magazine, it's this bit of paper here, and you can see I've had tremendous fun with paint um, in this journal because the pages are so thick they can just take the watercolour washes. So on the previous page here you'll see I started off with a piece of napkin, well a piece of like, I think it's just loo roll actually, that I've been cleaning my aqua brush on. And then I will wash, water wash the page and just added some of the colours that were in the napkin. And I really love the result. Um, so I've got this very vibrant kind of thing going on that will be easy to write over. And I really like the, um, the design of it. So I'm using some tube watercolours today. These are actually kind of pretty good quality there. Windsor and Newton artist quality so they're very nice thanks dad my dad got them for me I uh, love them and I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of each color and then start playing on the page and what I've chosen is sort of browny orangey yellowy colors oh that's amazing that I think is burnt burnt sienna yes and it's not very well mixed, so I think that's going to be all right. And the good old yellow ochre, can't go wrong with that. Um, and I think I'm going to have, is that cadmium yellow? This one here? No, it's Windsor yellow. I'm going to have a little bit more of that. That's the Windsor and Newton's kind of own yellow colour. So we've got those there. Now the next stage I think is to water wash the page and I'm using my aqua brush here and I've got quite a fine nib which probably isn't the best but never mind. There we go, just get that page really nice and wet. Uh, I'm going to start kind of popping paint on and it's going to start moving around. You'll see the way it sort of moves. I'm not doing this in any exact kind of way, but I do want to cover the edges of this paper just to kind of build it in. So we're going to have some pale going on there. Now I'm going to be a bit bold here and try and add some orange, but I want it very wet. I'm breaking all the rules of watercolour here, just like to say. Uh, this is just not how you're supposed to do it. Um, um, and any uh, sort of artisty people who know how to do this, you'll be horrified. But um, I kind of like playing, and I kind of think that's what this is all about. So let's see what... Um, see, that's running in there, and I like that effect very much. So we'll see where we get to. We're going to pop some yellow ochre on there. And yellow ochre is a great colour because it doesn't muddy the waters, like literally. If you use med yellow ochre, it tends to mix nicely with most things, um, which, which is very useful. So just, um, there's a lot of water there, so I'm going to spread it back across the page. It's running because of the paper um, kind of bending towards the middle of the book. So I'm going to stick that on there and we've got this amazing kind of browny orangey colour scape coming along and put some quite dark in this bottom corner. If you can see that there. 
Now, I think any reasonable person might look at that and say, what a terrible mess. <laughs> um, but it's actually coming out exactly how I wanted it. So if I just stick that on there as well. There we go. Good. So I'm going to clean the brush here. Right, so now the thing is to just get a bit of this excess off and then just paint it in again so it's a smooth surface and then the fun starts. So I've got this stencil and I think I'm going to carry on with the kind of idea of, I think I'm going to have it on a bit of an angle up there. I'm going to stick it down. Now the water's running all underneath and the joy of this is um, with this particular technique it does not matter because um, if you're painting through a stencil and it starts running underneath you know it's bleeding but this is not doing that so if we peel that away you'll see you've got that rather nice sort of pattern there. And I'm going to just put another bit here, I think. There we go. So it's just loo roll. There's nothing fancy going on here at all. Now, I discovered last night when I was having a play with this, that if your paint has dried a bit and you can't get it to come up, all you do is you just paint back over it with a damp brush. And, um, and then you can pull it away. So... You know, even on something like that, that's completely dry now, because the water always reacts with the paint, I could actually go back in and uh, and wet through the stencil, and then I'd still get my effect, which I think is great. So there's that like that. Now, um, it has made a bit of a, a line around the edges, where the stencil's gone down, and it's very easy just to paint that out if you don't like it. Um, I think I'm going to do one more down here, and you can see that stencil's covered in paint now, but it doesn't matter, because I don't mind if the orange goes over the brown. Um, and I'm not trying to match up the uh, the pattern, because I feel like that would just be a bit too tricky. I'm over-wetting this because my hunch is this brown is drying now. I've put it on quite thick and I don't know if it's going to come away without a bit more water. So we'll see. Yes, that's going to work now. So it's just uh, it's just playing with it really, which I personally find quite therapeutic. Um, and I do, as I say, I really like the scale of these stencils. And at £1.50 each, you can't really go too far wrong. I think there's, um, I think there's seven in the range maybe. Um... That, if my memory serves me right, which it may not. I don't know if you can get them in the shop. I got them online. But uh, anyway, they're definitely on hobbycraft.co.uk. So I hope you can see that effect there. And that's now ready for my writing, my journaling. I can stick what I like over it. I might stick a few more bees on it because there were some on the magazine page. And the other thing you can do, once you've finished, if you are using tube watercolours, is uh, what I did over here, where you um, you take your, your, I mean, I'm just using some packaging here. You don't need a posh stencil or anything. And then, because I didn't want to waste the paint I was using last night, I just actually put it on the page. And I love that effect. So this is my journal page for today in my Creative Life journal. I can stick photos over it. I can write round it. It's just a really lovely background and I'm very pleased with the way that turned out so nothing gets wasted. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Bye!